السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless every one of them and to grant every one of us goodness in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters, you and I know that at the moment people are more into football than they are into the deen. And it's unfortunate that in a way it distracts us sometimes from the deen. But we do have some players whom we acknowledge are probably more religious than those who are cheering them on. Subhanallah. So it's about time we learned a lesson. I've seen sports persons who are so keen on fasting, on fulfilling their salah, on fulfilling their obligations unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it leaves us quite embarrassed when we see the, those who have not even arrived at such levels of fame or of uh, professionalism in anything on the earth. Yet, we are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep lesson. I mean, the reason why I start this way, even though I'm talking about the ending of the month of Ramadan, when I came to speak to you earlier, I was speaking about the beginning of Ramadan, the excitement. I want to tell you that what happens in a lot of cases is, when a football match starts, everyone is excited. They are cheering. They are so happy. When people don't score goals, what happens? The excitement starts dwindling. You know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes into the match, 45 minutes, half time, no goal. What happens? A little while later, still no goal and everyone is quiet. You might hear the odd war cry. You might hear, you know, the odd few people making a little bit of noise here and there. You might hear the odd slogans, but the excitement is not that much. And suddenly you have the opportunity to score, but you didn't score. You thought I was going to say a goal, right? That's the deception of the devil. You have the opportunity to score, but you didn't score. Subhanallah, I'm referring all of this to the month of Ramadan. It started, we were excited for the first few days. This is what happens to almost all of us, myself included. The first day we're excited, the second day, the third day, perhaps the first weekend thereafter. Oh, there's a whole month to go, Subhanallah. Especially when you're in England like this, Subhanallah. Where the fast is so long, people say, ha ah, ha ha. You know, can I travel to Africa? I think I'll be luckier there, mashallah. By the way, we have very short fasts, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. But the reward is the same. Yeah, bonus, mashallah. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, the reality is, yes, indeed, we should protect ourselves from becoming from among those who lose the momentum as this beautiful month is proceeding and progressing because the days are passing the minutes the seconds are ticking away and every second that we lose is a great loss we are trying to achieve taqwa as the quran says we want to achieve god consciousness piety we want to achieve the closeness to allah we are trying we were excited when we started why did we allow it to dwindle here comes an opportunity to score a goal there is excitement in the stadium mashallah but nobody scored that goal and then comes another opportunity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us do you know what the last 10 nights are here a little bit more of momentum because now we want to put pressure on all the players right the difference is in Ramadan, we are all the players. We are all the players. Will you score the goal? Will you keep up the pressure? You can make the difference, subhanallah. What is the goal we are trying to score? We want to achieve forgiveness. Woe be unto the one who has witnessed the month of Ramadan, but has not achieved forgiveness. I don't want to be from them. I want to witness the month by the will of Allah. And I want to achieve forgiveness by the will of Allah. So I'm going to keep the momentum going. When I have the opportunity to score, I'm going to kick that ball straight into the nets. 
by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the excitement will continue. And you know what? I should not allow shaitan to score against me. How many people sleep over Salatul Fajr in Ramadan? It's a reality. Many people sleep over the other Salahs, the prayers. They sleep and it's the month of Ramadan. You've allowed shaitan to score a goal. Get up and do something about it. Save that ball from going into the net on the wrong side. We should become so happy when the obedience of Allah is right in front of us and there is no obstacle to fulfill that obedience. May Allah make it easy for us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thereafter, the most blessed moments begin in the last third of Ramadan from the 20th right up to the end. Any of those nights can actually be, can actually be Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree. The night of Taqdeer, Laylatul Qadr. The night of decree can be any one of those nights. And it's described in the Quran. Laylatul Qadr khayrum min alfi shahr. That one night of decree is better than 1,000 months. Subhanallah. Allah is giving you one night better than 1,000 months. We need to make an effort to look for, to search for that night. Imagine if we were told when that night was. That's not a blessing of Allah. Because all of us, maybe myself included, I don't know just as well, we are not told. But if we were told, we would have probably given more importance to one night. And then the rest of them are, yeah, by the way, I was there, Laylatul Qadr. Like what we do sometimes, Jum'ah, we're there. The rest of the week, what, what's Salah? What is Salah? I thought Salah is a football player. No? Yeah, people don't know what Salah is, subhanallah. By the way, that is Salah. If you know how to read the Arabic language, you know it's a, you know, because he's quite hot when it comes to football, mashallah. So it's amazing. It's Allah telling you subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm going to give you an opportunity and I'm going to hide it from you as a blessing so that you can search for it so that your worship is not just going to be one night but stretched over a whole season subhanallah. So there is a season in a season. You have Ramadan inside Ramadan. You have the last 10 nights inside those last 10 nights. You have the Fridays as well. Subhanallah at least one. And if you're lucky, sometimes two. What are you going to do? Brothers and sisters, I want you to promise yourself something very big here and now. We want to achieve the pleasure of Allah. We want to be happy. We want to be content. We are good people. I'd like to believe we're all good people. I don't think from amongst us, there is someone who is evil. May Allah protect us. Shaitan is evil, but we're all good. Subhanallah. We won't allow shaitan to take over. We won't allow shaitan to distract. We're all good. We want to achieve the pleasure of Allah. Promise that this month of Ramadan, you will at least strive to get up to worship Allah for an entire night, at least one of those 10 nights. Is that a promise? Subhanallah. Is that a promise? Okay, we heard the yes, but more than me, those angels right here heard that yes, we better fulfill that promise. Now, I was saying moments ago, I come from Africa, so I'm fortunate our fasts are short. Guess what? You come from this part of the world, you are fortunate you can stay awake all night in Ibadah and it's just like three hours, four hours. Subhanallah. So there is a bonus on either side. You see, it's Allah and His mercy. If I want to stay awake all night, it's like Subhanallah, almost 10 whole hours perhaps. For you, it's much shorter, although the fast is longer. But that's Allah's gift. Promise Allah that you're going to do extra Ibadah during the last 10 nights. Don't dwindle. Don't let things become stagnant, not at all. 
Promise Allah. This is a month of Ramadan that's coming. It's going to be a month with a difference. Already from the beginning, we've sorted ourselves out. We've eradicated bad habits. We've developed some good habits. We've become better people. The way we speak to our family members, the amount of patience we have, the, uh, the way we communicate with others, the words that we use when we talk to people. And I want to suggest something strong, very strong. Do you know what people do nowadays? They don't even smile. They don't smile. Subhanallah, no smiling. Come on guys. My name is Smile by the way. Ismail, you know, it's how you pronounce Mo Salah. Well, you can also say smile, you know. Subhanallah. Come on, it's a charity. It's an act of worship. I want to complain to all of you about something I notice. We are here. All of us want to earn the pleasure of Allah. All of us want to gain closeness to Allah. We want to feel good. We want to become better people. But we have not greeted each other. Here, now, today. Did you greet the person next to you? The answer is no, I didn't. Maybe a few of them. Spend a moment. I'm going to stop for 20 seconds, perhaps or less. Please greet the person next to you. And at least... Greet them, mashallah. Smile, alhamdulillah, brother, sister, mashallah, tabarakallah. Mashallah, tabarakallah. I see we're having a big discussion. Okay, now you can continue this a little bit later. And you get acquainted with one another. Not because, brother, I need your business card. I've seen you driving a Rolls Royce out there. No, but subhanallah, I want to enter Jannah. Rajulani tahabba fillah. Those who loved each other for the sake of Allah. I don't want money, materialistic items, nothing. But you could be from anywhere in the world. Your ethnicity becomes irrelevant. Your background becomes irrelevant. Your race becomes irrelevant. Everything becomes irrelevant. You are a key to the door of Jannah for me because you are my brother or my sister. If I really love you for the sake of Allah, not for my own personal gain of this world, but rather for a heavenly gain, something way beyond, then in that case, I will definitely be able to earn the closeness to Allah by getting closer to you for the right reasons. But we get closer to people for the wrong reasons. You see someone, mashallah, they look wealthy, they're smelling good, etc. They perhaps might look quite good and then we like want to associate with them. The minute you see someone who might just look average, mediocre, we haven't even greeted. I'm sitting next to you and I move away. Subhanallah. Why? Because I don't really want to associate. Why? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Learn to smile at one another. Learn to greet one another. Learn to respect one another. When we go to the masjids and the houses of Allah, those are the houses where the angels are watching us. Allah is watching us. It's His own house. How do you communicate with those who are with you in the same house for the same purpose, heading to the same direction? I always say, I witnessed some of the World Cup in 2010 in South Africa. Not to say I attended the matches, but I saw what happened. They made lift clubs because the people were so many heading in the same direction. They used to give lifts to strangers who were going to the football match. But we as Muslimin who are part of the Ummah will not give a lift for the Muslims or to the Muslims going to the house of Allah to earn the pleasure of the same Allah to do the same thing. And we are connected in a far bigger way. Our Jannah is sometimes dependent upon how we treat one another. Subhanallah. We can improve on that. Starting at home. Starting at home because then you get some wise people who are so beautiful outside the home and when they come into the home, they are someone else altogether. And we've said this so many times, but the Quran says, Remind for indeed the reminding benefits those who believe. So we're reminding you, mashallah. And I'm reminding myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy with all the bruises that I have in my mouth, with what I have inside on my teeth, I'm still smiling at you. And I'm still speaking, subhanallah, only Allah knows what I must be going through inside here. But it's an act of worship. My brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. Imagine we have such a religion that teaches us to smile at one another, to be kind to one another. To be able to get closer to Allah, you need to also respect the creatures that that same Allah has made. 
starting with humankind, your family members and the others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So we have this beautiful season of the last 10 days. In it, a hidden night. Like I said, we've all promised that we're going to make an effort. We're going to make an effort by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do some extra acts of worship at least during these last 10 nights. Even if it means an extra two units of prayer, an extra page or two of recitation of the Quran, something known as a dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, and so many other adhkar, ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come on, we can do so, so much better. And you start feeling good when you've made resolutions, when you see your life changing, when you have hope, do not be a person who doesn't have hope. No matter what has happened in your life, the future is better than what happened in the past. The future is better than the present as well. Subhanallah, it will always be better. We all suffer loss because that is the plan of Allah. He wants to see how you're going to manage the loss. If you want to take the guidance of Allah, He will help you manage it. But if you don't want to take the guidance of Allah, you end up depressed and you get into a worse situation. But the help of Allah, you will come out of it stronger than you ever were before. That's the promise of Allah. You just need taqwa. You need God consciousness. You need closeness to Allah. That's what the fast is meant to bring to you. So my brothers and sisters, mashallah, tabarakallah. We're in the houses of Allah. We're engaging in ibadah. We're reading the Quran. We're expanding and increasing our knowledge. We're trying to put it into practice. We're conveying it to others. We've become softened. We are better people. And we have the night of decree, one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. A narration says, or the bulk of the narrations say, one of the last odd nights from the last 10. One of the odd nights from the last 10. But there is a narration that says it could be any one of those 10. Did you know that? Subhanallah. Still call out to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I always see the brothers fill the masjid for Salat al Jum'ah. And the asr of the same day is empty. Why? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be strong. We don't want to be worshippers of Allah only in the month of Ramadan. But rather, do you know, when you put something in your mouth in Ramadan, as you're opening your fast, it tastes so beautiful. It tastes so beautiful. Because there is a blessing in it from Allah. You stayed away from food for the entire day. Now when you put something in your mouth, the same thing that tasted different before Ramadan and shall taste the same as it did before Ramadan, after Ramadan, during Ramadan, it tastes much better. You enjoy it. Subhanallah. It's the blessing. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why earlier in my session, I spoke about Farhatani lissa'im. The one who fasts has two points of happiness. One is when he opens his fast at the end of the day. The other is when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first one actually includes when he's completed the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. There is a day of Eid, a day of happiness given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before I get to the day of Eid, let me tell you. If the last 10 nights of Ramadan come and we do not become serious about what is remaining of Ramadan, then we've not understood. We haven't understood Ramadan and we haven't understood what Allah has just blessed us with. It reminds me of a person who gives you a stone and tells you, you know what? Keep this. It's valuable. You look at it, it looks dirty. You decide to throw it away. Subhanallah. Another man picks it up and says, wow, this looks like a diamond. It's a bit dirty. Rubs it, cleans it. Subhanallah goes to the jeweler and gets three million pounds for that stone. And then you come and say, hey, that was my stone. You threw it away. I'm sorry. Allah has given us the month of Ramadan that many of us do not know the value of. We throw it away. Others have picked it up. 
They are earning and gaining. One day we might regret when we look back and say, Wow, the month of Ramadan passed and I didn't know it was so valuable. So take it seriously. Take it very seriously, my brothers and sisters. Polish it up. Make sure that you earn and achieve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. We need to make the effort and Allah will do the rest for us. We need to make the effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the rest for us. So we are coming towards the completion of the Quran by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're coming towards the completion of the Quran. And remember, you don't have to just do one khatam in Ramadan. Khatam meaning the completion of the Quran. But you need to try to look into its meaning, complete that as well. You need to try to complete and start again. It doesn't mean that if I started at the beginning of the month, I'm just happy to do one juice a day. No, do more than that. Don't set yourself a limit of the juice, but rather set yourself a time that I'm going to spend X amount of time and try and maximize the benefit within that time for yourself with the Quran, with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't it a month of the Quran? Isn't it a month of happiness? Isn't it a month of forgiveness? Isn't it a month of the mercy of Allah? Isn't it a month of resolving our disputes amongst ourselves? If you look at the hadith that speaks about the night of decree, the powerful night known as Laylatul Qadr that we spoke about, it mentions how there were people disputing and for that reason, the knowledge of the precise date was taken away. That to me is a lesson that when we dispute, the barakah is gone from a lot of things. Do not quarrel, dispute amongst one another, fight with one another. Because you will be unsuccessful and you lose your might, your energy, your power. Allah says, be patient for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. Let's go back to the football match. Okay, so we've scored. It's 1-1 one, one. and guess what? We're 89 minutes. Can you imagine the feeling? Subhanallah, 89 minutes and the score is 1-1. One, one. There is excitement. What's happening in the stadium? Everyone is screaming this side, that side. People are up one minute remaining and they know, wow, someone needs to score here. Allah blesses us with extra time. Do you know how? When the moon is not sighted, subhanallah. Oh, when the moon is not sighted, you got one more day. Why? Somebody needs to score here. We're still on par. We're still equal. So the moon is not sighted, subhanallah. One more fast. Don't be upset. Don't be angry. I know they long. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. But it's your opportunity given by Allah. Imagine if between myself and the fire of hell was just one more fast. Allahu Akbar. And Allah gave it to me and it was the last Ramadan and my last opportunity to engage in a farad fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to die somewhere through that year. Isn't that a blessing of Allah? Look at it that way. Look at it that way. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa speaks about salah, he says, Salli salata muwadda'in. Fulfill your daily prayers, each one of them as though it's your last opportunity to fulfill prayer for the sake of Allah. When I say Allahu Akbar, I must think to myself, maybe this might be my last chance. It's my final farewell prayer. I want to take it further and say that should be the case with all our ibadah. That should be the case with my fasting as well. I must think to myself, this is the last fast. You know, last year I had someone message me and say, you know, I'm not feeling too well. Can I uh, break my fast? Now you and I know that we do have, we do have the rulings in Islam that are filled with mercy. If you're really not well, you can fast later on. If you are traveling, for example, you have a bonus. You may choose to fast later on. There is that leeway that we have. It's the mercy of Allah. But you know what? If you're not really that unwell, go for it. Bismillah. Try and go for it. The reason is it might just be your last opportunity. That's what I'm saying. Subhanallah. 
Imagine any opportunity to score that goal. Go for it. Don't leave it. You know, don't say, okay, we might lose this match. We'll, we'll, we'll gain it later on. No, you may not have that chance. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, make the most of the month of Ramadan. Ensure that hopelessness is never a word in your dictionary. Not in the dictionary of a true believer. Iman is there to eradicate hopelessness because I have hope in the mercy of Allah. That's what my Iman is, my conviction, my faith. I will never be hopeless. I will be happy. I will smile. When you smile already, you have eradicated some of your problems and you have a positive outlook. There was a brother of mine recently, a brother in Islam who suffered a loss with his business burning down. I spoke to him. I said, brother, don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on trying. There, there are people whose businesses were burnt, who lost their jobs, people who suffered and struggled in so many ways. When they did not give up, Allah opened the doors way beyond their imagination. When you give up, that's when your doors close. For as long as you have not given up, your doors will never close. So no matter what you're going through in life, Never give up as a mu'min, never. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. People might ask, well, for how long? I promise you, 10 years, 20 years is nothing in the eyes of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows why he has delayed you. He knows what he is doing for you. He knows what he wants. I give you a real example. A brother lost his job. Two years unemployed, crying. I see him in the masjid. My brother, make dua. Allah will open your doors. He comes to me. He says, you know, I'm losing hope. I kept on telling him, don't lose hope. Make dua. Keep on asking Allah and keep on trying. That's an important point because you can't just say, oh Allah, I'm making dua for you. And then you sit and say, oh Allah, I need a job. And you expect some big CEO of a company to come into the message and say, you are employed. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's a joke. Subhanallah. You need to go out, search, look, send your CV, apply here, apply there. You might get, you might not get. Go for this interview, that interview, keep trying. Two years later, the brother got a job with a salary far beyond what he had thought he would ever get in his life. I told him, wasn't that worth it? He says, Wallahi, it was worth it. It was worth it. Subhanallah, this is a real example. Be patient. We know the struggles. We all have to go through struggles. That's the plan of Allah. That's why we have the month of Ramadan to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, I will give you a season. It's the month of Ramadan. One thing that impresses me about Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, you will agree with this. Do you know that month, that month of Ramadan? It's the ideal, ideal prescription. When Allah says, Kutiba alaykum siyamu, we have prescribed upon you fasting. We have written for you fasting. A prescription you know is set with time from moon to moon, one lunar month. If it was less than that, it would not give us the kick that we get out of it, right? If it was more than that, perhaps we may have become a little bit despondent and lazy. I cannot imagine Ramadan being less than a month or more than a month. So it's a gift of Allah. Have you thought of that? It's exactly right. In the 12 months, one is taken out. That's for you to reconnect with Allah fasting. What if Ramadan was like spread over, say a week in January, a week in Muharram, say a week in Rabi al Awwal, uh, a week in Ramadan and one week in, uh, say, Dhul Qa'dah. It wouldn't really have the impact it has. It's so beautiful. We have 30 Jews of the Quran. We're covering them in the month of Ramadan. Not once, but a few times, inshallah. We have so much. Just as we are gaining this momentum, we get to the 15th day. When we have the 15th, we are now going downhill. Subhanallah, as we go downhill, we're climbing up again because we want to end on a good note. Subhanallah, it reminds me of what they call the penalty shootout, right? Where now there's excitement. Everyone is watching, waiting. Subhanallah, what are you going to do? And the one comes up and guess what? It goes straight into the net. Subhanallah, now you're watching the other one. You have to do two things. You have to be good at scoring and good at saving. 
You have to have a good goalkeeper and at the same time you have to be able to score. You know from a spiritual angle what that would refer to? You have to be good at doing good deeds and protecting yourself from bad deeds. That's what it is. I must be good at scoring my good deeds, my salah, my ibadah, etc. And I must be good at saving from saving myself from letting a goal be scored against me by shaitan's handiwork. One might say shaitan is tied in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, I think he gets to us by Wi-Fi, by the way. Yeah, Bluetooth sometimes. From outside, just like how when he trapped Adam alayhi salam, he was already kicked out of Jannah. Do you know that? Allah took him out of Jannah. So how did he whisper into Adam alayhi salam again to say, eat from the tree, eat from the forbidden tree? Fine. How did he do that? Well, the Mufassireen and the Ulama has spoken about so many different ways. One of them is from outside. He had this little, these beams he was beaming in. You know, when we read it many years ago, I didn't understand it. But now, subhanallah, we connect onto the Wi-Fi and it's far off. The mobile network, everything. Shaitan can be far away, but he can be beaming. Exactly, beaming in. And there is another example that I've cited in the past where we have the winding. The winding, the winding of what? You know those little toys we used to wind when we were young? Wind the toy and then leave it and it stamps its feet for a while until the winding is all unwound. So what shaitan does, he knows he's going to be tied up when Ramadan starts. So he winds us just before Ramadan. That's why you find all the moon wars, right? Wound completely, boom, 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 queen, until the last click. And then he leaves you. And we're stamping exactly as per his design right up to the end of Ramadan. And when we get to the day of Eid, do spirituality at its lowest shaitan gets hold of you the night of Eid my brothers and sisters part of understanding the ending of Ramadan is to understand what is the day of Eid subhanallah many of us don't know what's the day of Eid Allah says Allah has blessed you so you complete that whole period that is prescribed by Allah and you declare the greatness of Allah because of the guidance that he bestowed upon you so that you can be thankful to Allah. Thankful for what? He just forgave you. Allah forgave you. The hadith says, Man qama. Whoever stands up in worship on the night of decree, one night, all their sins are wiped out completely. Another narration speaks of the whole month of Ramadan, but we're talking about this one. Whoever fasts correctly for the whole month of Ramadan, their sins are wiped out. When you leave the month of Ramadan, you are leaving totally pure and clean. My brothers and sisters, I'm serious. We forget about this. So that's why when we start designing our clothing for the day of Eid, it's all in the obedience of the devil. Nothing to do with Allah. Because you know what? We're now clean, but we've forgotten that shaitan's going to be released as soon as the moon is sighted and he's got clutches on us completely. He's held us. Your meetings on the day of Eid, we've already planned haram meetings. Who are you meeting? I stayed away from my boyfriend for one whole month. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's a reality. What I just said is a fact. Yes. So what are you planning? <laughs> you can imagine. A'udhu <laughs> billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. You see, we're acknowledging what I've just said because it's a plot of the devil. And I've just pressed a red button. This time, it's not going to happen. No, I'm not going to choose the day that Allah has given me to celebrate my forgiveness, to go and jump straight into the devil's hands into sin. What an insult unto Allah. You've wiped out the whole month of Ramadan in one day. And it's the day Allah gave you to be happy. You're making everybody happy besides Allah. It's not going to happen. No way. Not this time. And not from now on. If you want to sin, not on the day of Eid. That I'm not condoning sin, but I'm saying you need to understand. It's like going to Makkah and saying, when I go to Makkah, I'm going to sin. 
That is even more sinful because it's a double, triple, quadruple sin. Allah has bestowed you a favor. I can't go to the masjid, the house of Allah, and then say, when I get to the masjid, I'm going to sin. No. Imagine a man taking a bottle into the masjid and saying, guys, you know, eh, I know, but you know, it's okay. No. No one would do that. A drunkard would not even dream of going to the house of Allah with a bottle. Why do we do it on a special day? The eve of Eid is known as Laylatul Jaiza. It's known as the prize giving night. Once the moon is sighted, the prizes are dished out. You have achieved forgiveness from Allah. You have achieved Jannah. You achieved forgiveness. This one achieved forgiveness. You have a prize. You have a prize. You did well. You did very well. You came this and you did that. Subhanallah, we're getting our prizes. We cannot become oblivious of ibadah on that night. No, not at all. All the haram starts on the day of Eid sometimes. Is that not a reality? Change it for the sake of Allah. Change it. It's not good enough. We can do better. We do not choose a day that Allah blessed us with. This is why I also say, and I'm just going to divert slightly. Even when we're getting married, it's a sacred union, a celebration, according to some of half of your faith. And that celebration is marked by the pleasure of the devil in a lot of cases because we forget like i said we are good people but we need a reminder now and again dress nicely on this day it's a celebration of your iman it's a celebration of something great it's the decree of allah it's the seed that you're sowing for your future and your progeny and your offspring and you'd love offspring who are obedient so you today be obedient when I obey Allah, Allah gives me children who will obey me. Subhanallah, simple as that. May Allah forgive us. Now, some of us must be thinking, well, you know, my kids don't obey me at all. And yeah, you're right. We did do things wrong in the past and we didn't obey Allah. What do I do now? My brothers and sisters, I want to end my talk by telling you. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Oh my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves let them know Allah will forgive all your sins no matter what you've done for indeed Allah is most forgiving most merciful Allah is most forgiving most merciful don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah if you turn back to Allah he will make right what has happened wrong in the past he will wipe it out completely you don't need to confess to me to anyone else to a family member to a spouse to your children to your parents no confessions in islam you confess to allah you confess to he who made you you cry to him you tell him i'm not going to do this again and he will wipe your sin out totally so my brothers and sisters, I hope and I pray that we've actually taken a little bit. I hope and I pray that we've taken a little bit as a reminder for ourselves. This Ramadan, we will start it inshallah on a good note. Just to recap what I said in my first, the opening speech that I delivered here. That inshallah, before we enter the month of Ramadan, we clean our act. We don't wait to enter Ramadan and then clean the act. You clean it now by the will of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ used to fast more in this month. He used to engage more in ibadah in this month in preparation for the beautiful month of Ramadan. Same applies with us. We will prepare for this month. We will start quitting our bad ways. And like I said, brothers and sisters, one bad habit, at least one, quit one, minimum one. That one that you know you've had to give up from a long, long time. You haven't been strong enough to throw the habit, throw it out now. Allah will open your doors. Be powerful for the sake of Allah. That one good thing that you know you have to do. You know there is something you've wanted to do for a long, long time. It's in your heart. You know it's the right thing. You know you have to get it done. But for some reason you're just being weak. Do it now for the sake of Allah. Make that intention. Get it done. Be strong. You need the push. And Allah will guide you the rest of the way. He will make it easy. He will open your doors, your path. 
And thereafter, you will see a beautiful month of ibadah, even if you don't manage to complete the entire Quran. The fact that you read, the fact that you enjoyed, the fact that you were blessed, you spoke well, you addressed people in the correct way, your family members, you did not get angry and upset when the food delayed a little bit. You know, the whole month of Ramadan, we're not going to be eating during the day. Some people get angry when after Maghrib, the food is delayed. Hey, don't you know we've got so little time? Brother, you were patient for 14 hours, 18 hours, and now you're getting angry for 18 minutes? Come on, you're spoiling the show here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. I also want to say something else. Let's learn to help one another. Don't think to yourself that, oh, that's a duty. That's my wife's duty. Learn to help. Don't think to yourself, that's my husband's duty. Learn to help wherever you can. This is what builds the family. This is what brings us together. When we come together, when we help each other fulfill our chores, our roles, and when we make sure we respect each other, give and take here and there, subhanallah, leniency, we will lead a very, very blessed life. The more lenient you are, the more it is a sign of that Allah has had mercy on you. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ it is only because of the mercy of Allah upon you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you are merciful and lenient towards them around you. When I read that, my mind goes to different places. I start thinking to myself, imagine Allah is saying, O Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because of our mercy, you were lenient upon the kuffar of Quraysh and those around you. What about me? When I'm not lenient with my own family members, my own children, my spouse, my parents, and so on, I need to know that when I'm lenient with them, it's a sign that Allah is having mercy on me. Because Allah says to me that, you know what? Charity begins at home. It definitely does. And that's inshallah going to change me as a person. Brothers and sisters, I've really enjoyed speaking to myself and yourselves here. We've had a few lighter moments, but all of them were to draw beautiful lessons from. And I hope that we can definitely have a month of Ramadan with a great difference. Because, you know, we've gathered here today. I feel the connection. I feel the love. There's so many faces I recognize. Mashallah, so many I don't. But you are my brothers and sisters in the deen. And to be very fair and honest, I've enjoyed every moment of mine here today. I pray that it was not a waste of time on my part or yours. I pray that I can benefit from what I've said and the others, and you can benefit too. Take home a message or two. Let's change our lives. We all are good people. I promise you we are. We all have goodness, but let's develop that goodness by the will of Allah. Let the people around us feel it. Let us feel it when it comes to our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with those words, I want to close saying, Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa.